Good morning, church. So glad that you can join us today for our online Sunday service. Uh, before we begin, just a reminder for you to prepare uh, the emblem for the Lord's Supper that we'll be partaking after the worship. So do prepare it now so that you won't uh, miss out. So let us just open uh, with a word of prayer before we start praise and worship. Amen. Father Lord, thank you for this wonderful day that we can gather here. Um, from our homes, Lord, to just worship you, Lord, because, Lord Jesus, we believe that you are omnipresent, that you are everywhere, and you can be present here in our homes right now. So, Lord Jesus, I pray as we offer our worship unto you, that your name will be glorified today. In Jesus' name I pray, amen.
today we are trading in our sickness, Lord, because we believe that you heal, Lord, you have the power to restore it. And right now as we just sing this song, we want to surrender and that we say that we are available for you, for you to come into our hearts and just have your way in it.
as we surrender as dogs, we are available. Lord, you can do mighty works in us. Lord, we praise your name, Lord Jesus.
pray that you open our hearts, Lord, for us to have a deeper relationship with you, for us to come to the feet of Jesus with all our needs, because, Lord Jesus, you are the one who can heal, you are the one who can restore, and you are the one who can redeem. So, Lord Jesus, we praise your name. Amen. As we prepare our hearts to partake the Lord's Supper this morning, let us go to the Lord in prayer. Father, we want to thank you as we come to the Lord's table this morning. We are reminded of what Jesus done for us on the cross of Calvary 2,000 years ago. Lord, his body was broken for us. His blood was shed for us for the forgiveness of sin. And as we partake this morning, may we remember the finished work of the cross on Calvary. Father, we bless you, we worship you in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. Apostle Paul in 1 Corinthians chapter 11, verse 23, he says this, For I received from the Lord that which I also delivered to you, that the Lord Jesus on the same night in which he was betrayed to bread. When he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take eat, this is my body, which is broken for you, do this in remembrance of me. Let's partake the bread together. In the same manner, he also took the cup after supper, saying, This cup is a new covenant in my blood. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you will claim the lost death. Here he comes. Let's drink the cup. Let's pray. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus for this new covenant that we have through your son Jesus. And we pray for those who physically are well. We pray for the power of Jesus, the healing power of Jesus. Touch them right now in Jesus' name, wherever they are. We speak healing to come to your physical body. We ask in the name of Jesus, Lord, for those who need strength, we pray for the strengthening of their physical body in Jesus' mighty name. Amen. This morning, we are glad to have Elder Enoch to come and share with us the Word of God. Let us welcome Elder Enoch. Hello. A blessed good morning to all of you who are listening in. Today's message is entitled The Word of God with three question marks. That is to say, whether the word of God is truly true and is it truly the word of God? Because a few weeks ago it has come up in the WhatsApp uh, online querying whether it was from a Christian or from a Christian pastor whether the word of God is truly the word of God and whether it is true or not. So we, today we are going to deal with this subject of the word of God and whether it is true. Now Paul said in, to the Corinthians that if Jesus is not raised from the dead, then our faith is in vain. Similarly, if the word of God is not true, then our faith is in vain. 
because the word of God, the Bible says Jesus was raised from the dead. And if the Bible is not true, then Jesus has not raised from the dead and our faith in Jesus, in the word of God, is in vain and we might as well close shop. Okay? But Jesus, but the Bible is the word of God and we are going to see see this and see uh, how true it is and how the word of God has come to us in various forms and in various ways. Now the big picture of this is, firstly, we must establish what is the truth and who is the truth. The Bible says, Father God is a word of, is a God of truth in, in Deuteronomy 32. His son Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. The Holy Spirit is the spirit of truth in John 16. Now the Bible originates from the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. And is the word of God. It's true, and it's the truth. The devil has no truth in him. And Jesus said that he's a liar and the father of lies in John chapter 8. Now, whenever we hear that the Bible is not true or it is not the word of God, we can know that it originates from the devil to deceive the world. In 1 Timothy chapter 4, verse 1, it's, here it says that in the later times, the Spirit says expressly that some will depart from the faith giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. If anyone says or you hear any statement that the word of God is not true, then it is from a deceiving spirit. Right? Okay. Now we want to deal now with uh, uh, the different aspects of the word of God, how it has come to us in different forms and in different ways. Now firstly, we have the Bible as the written word of God. The Bible is the written word of God. Secondly, we will have look into the living word which, which is Jesus Christ. And thirdly, the spoken word which can come to us from the Holy Spirit. And fourthly, the revealed word of the word of God. Now, the Bible as the written word of God. As the Holy Scriptures, the Bible uh, says, as the written word of God, it is God-inspired and God-breathed. 2 Timothy 3.16. Quoting from Scofield, quote, These words are authoritative without error in the original words and are the infallible revelation of God to men. Now, in the Old Testament, the Ten Commandments written by the finger of God on the two tablets of stone which God gave to Moses on Mount Sinai, right? So, the Ten Commandments were written by the hand of God and given to Moses, and we have it in the Bible as the Ten Commandments, and it is the written word of God. In the New Testament, in the Gospel of Matthew, Jesus overcame the temptation of the devil in the wilderness after fasting 40 days and 40 nights by the written word of God. Each time Jesus was tempted, he quoted the scriptures and said, it is written, it is written, it is written, three times when the devil came to tempt him. So the written word, the scripture, is not only powerful, but it is true as the written word of God uh, for us to be able to defeat the devil. The devil knows the truth of God's word and had to bow down to it, even as the written word of God spoken by Jesus when he was tempted three times. Now in the Gospels, the Gospel of Mark begins with the written prophecy of Isaiah uh, 43 in the, yes, and Isaiah, in, sorry, in Isaiah 43. In the Gospel of Luke, chapter 1, verse 3, 
he says that he wrote this account from eyewitnesses so that Theophilus might know the truth of what is written. John, in chapter 21, says he wrote these things and his, and, and his gospel and that his testimony is true. The writers of all the gospel uh, testify that the written word of God is true. John in 1 John 5.13 further says that the very reason that he wrote these things is that we may believe on the name of the Son of God that we may know that we have eternal life in his name. Jesus told John to write these things which he has seen, the things which are and the things that will come in the future in the book of Revelation. So all these are written by John in the book of Revelation when he was taken up in the spirit into heaven. The second uh, means that uh, the word of God has come to us is by the living word through Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ is called the word of God in Revelation 19, 19. He was the word in the beginning. He was with God and is called God the Word. He was crucified on the cross, died, and on the third day he rose from the dead. Is now alive forevermore. Revelation 1.18 Now Jesus is a living Word of God and is also the truth, the way and the life. He is the way, the truth and the life, right? What he says is the truth. His words in all the Gospels are printed in red. And the Bible, the written word is true. His words are true. His words to his disciples and to us are from God, the Father, and are true. John 17, 8. Because God is a God of truth. Deuteronomy 32. In John 6, 63, Jesus says the words that he speaks are spirit and are life. The words of Jesus, the living word of God, give life and are alive and are not dead works. The third uh, way the word of God has come to us is by the spoken word and it's usually by the Holy Spirit. Now God the Father speaks through his written word, the Bible. God the Son, Jesus speaks as the living word of God. God the Holy Spirit speaks to us as the spoken word of God. Long ago, God spoke by the prophets. In these last days, he has spoken to us by his son, Hebrews 1. The three members of the Godhead can speak to us. After Jesus has ascended to the right hand of his father, God sent down the Holy Spirit to teach us all things and to bring to our remembrance what Jesus has said to us. John 14. So at Pentecost, the Holy Spirit filled the 120 20 disciples and they spoke with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. As he spoke through them in so many languages, the wonderful works of God. Peter said that this was the fulfillment of Joel's prophecy that in the last days, God will pour out his spirit and sons and daughters, uh, men servants and handmaidens shall speak and prophesy by the Holy Spirit as he gives them utterance as his spoken word. Now since the day of Pentecost and in the book of Acts, there have been many occasions where we read the apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit and they spoke the words of the Holy Spirit as he gave them utterance. Uh, Acts 10, 19, for Peter at Antioch, the Holy Spirit uh, gave them utterance, you know, as he filled them and gave his word that we may speak his word that are in our minds and spirits in prophecy or in declaring the gospel about the love and wonderful works of God. Now, Lastly, 
the word of God can come to us as the revealed word in Revelation and as the rhema of God. Now for Revelation, sometimes the word of God is given to us by direct revelation. Now when Jesus asked his disciples who they think he is, Simon Peter answered, you are the Christ, the son of the living God. It was not of, out of his knowledge and mind, for flesh and blood did not reveal this to him. But Jesus said, it was God the Father who has given you this, given you this revelation. These words by revelation in Matthew 16. All right. Now, um, Jesus says, the Holy Spirit will bring all things to our remembrance. Uh, also before that, the whole book of Revelation written by John was given to him by Revelation. The angel was sent by Jesus Christ to reveal these things to him, to bring him up to heaven, to see the things that will come to pass in the future. And these are revealed words of, of uh, Jesus to John and told him to write down uh, as the written word. So it became the last book of the Bible, uh, Revelation. But all these actually are revealed words to John that he wrote it in the book of Revelation as the written word. It was a revealed word written as the written word. Now Jesus says the Holy Spirit will bring all things to our remembrance. And this can be by Revelation, John 14, 26. Also prophecy came to the prophets of old, and he spoke by the Holy Spirit as revealed to them. 2 Peter 1.21 Paul says in 1 Corinthians that his speech, his preaching and wisdom that he gave to the Corinthians were revealed by the Spirit of God to him. Even his knowledge about the mystery of Christ was revealed by the Spirit. And the mystery was that the Gentiles would be fellow heirs and members of his body, partakers of his promises in Christ in the gospel. Ephesians 3, 4 to 6. Now in John chapter 8, Jesus acknowledges that the things that he speaks were taught him or revealed to him by God his Father. All right? Now to have knowledge of Jesus, Paul in Ephesians 1, 17 says, he prays for them, for the church, for all of us, that the God of our Lord Jesus Christ, the Father of glory, may give to us, to them, the spirit of wisdom and revelation, revelation to know more about Jesus. This should also actually be the prayer of the church, that we might have the spirit of wisdom and revelation of Jesus and his word to have more written wisdom and revelation and the word of God. Not only from the written word, but also we can get the word of God from the living word Jesus, from the spoken word from the Holy Spirit and the revealed word of God that can come to us by direct revelation or by rhema. Now, regarding rhema and logos, the scripture the written word, the whole of scripture is referred to as the Logos. It is the general word, general written word of God. Rema comes from the good word to reveal. Rema is the word given to us as the Holy Spirit quickens and reveals words from the Logos, the written uh, word in the Bible. The Logos is the uh, Sorry. The rhema is what the spirit quickens and reveals the words of the Logos to a specific person for a specific situation. The Logos are all the words of scripture in our minds, while the rhema is the individual scripture or word the Holy Spirit brings to our mind in remembrance. Rhema is thus the specific revealed word the Holy Spirit quickens out of the Logos 
to us. Now there's a verse in uh, Mark chapter 4, 14, which actually refers to the Logos. It is, it is about the sower. The sower sows the word. Now here the word is the Logos. He sows the general word. It's just like the preacher teaching and preaching from the Bible, preaching to us the Logos, the general word of God. So Mark 4.14, uh, 4, the sower sows the word, is the, sowing the Logos, the word of God. Now the specific word, the rhema that comes to us, all right, uh, whether by the Spirit, Revelation, is found in Mark 14.72. Now you remember when uh, before Peter betrayed Jesus, Peter said, "Before the cock crow three twice, you shall remember me. Uh, you shall remember uh, what I have spoken to you three times that you are going to uh, deny me." So in Mark fourteen seventy two, when the cock crowed twice, the rhema, the rhema came to him. He remembered the specific word that Jesus spoke that he would deny Jesus. These words came as a rhema. Jesus spoken word to him specifically. It was not the logos, general word of the scripture, but a spoken word, the rhema that Jesus spoke to Peter, specifically to him. And he was convicted and he went out and cried bitterly. Now, that is all about the word of God. As uh, somebody has said, whether it's really the word of God. But know this, that the word of God is true and is true. It's true and it's truth. It comes not only from God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And it can come to us as the revealed word of God. Now, as we hear the message, let our faith be steadfast believe that the Bible is the true word of God and not the lies of deceitful spirits, that it is not the word of God. Believe that Jesus is the son of God who was crucified for the forgiveness of our sins, that on the third day he was raised from the dead and in believing we shall have eternal life with God. Now if you are one of those who has not believed in Jesus Christ, and you want to perhaps pray this prayer with me, with faith in your heart. Say together with me now, Almighty God, I believe Jesus is your risen son, and I thank you. He has died for my sins. I want to receive him now as my Lord and Savior, and I open my heart to invite him now I thank you for giving me eternal, eternal life and for loving me. Now, if this is the first time that you have prayed this prayer, we would like to hear from you. Please contact us. Right. Now, before we end, uh, perhaps I will bless you with this blessing from Numbers 6. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen.